I'll bet you thought that was it. We were all done. Nope. I'm not going anywhere. I can't. They don't allow me to go anywhere. <laughs>Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 51 of What's on the Bench Weekly. If you're not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on. Some finished, some a work in progress, some just getting started. This one has been sitting around for some time and really desperately needed my attention. But here it is, the no fun haver. Uh, this was sort of like a mashup project that I decided to do uh, after I decided I wasn't making a fun haver uh, knockoff um, because uh, I just kind of lost interest in that and then I made this. Uh, there are previous episodes, I'll link to one of them up here so you can check some of the progress out on this truck. Uh, it is a Proline Chevy Silverado done with a uh, rust patina. Imagine it's a wrap. I know that these bodies would be fiberglass in real life, not able to rust fiberglass, but imagine it's a wrap to look as if it's old. That's the idea behind this look. Um, obviously, had to put a big Ford bow tie on it just to uh, mess with people. And also put a Mustang decal on the back, because why not? Um, this uh, is sort of a uh, Baja truck. Uh, it is an element... Um, what was this? I think this was a gatekeeper originally that I ended up putting um, independent front suspension on, but I wanted those trailing arm rears. So it's sort of got the whole package, uh, including some nice Artful Dodgers, uh, a nice shiny pieces on there uh, to really kind of amp up the look and make it feel a bit more trophy truck-ish. Um, nice long travel front and rear, as you can see, lots of stuff going on there. Um, nice little brazed cage that I left raw to make it look cruddy. Uh, spare tire, the works. Uh, I'm really quite pleased with this. Nitto tires, uh, these are the larger grapplers from Axial and some method wheels from Vanquish Products. Um, overall, a nice looking truck. The problem was, it was never very fast, and that's because um, that Stealth X transmission uh, isn't really designed for speed. <laughs> Which, you know, it's a trophy truck, let's make it go quick. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get the, uh, the lid off here and I'll show you what changes I've made. Need some tools for that, not a quick process. All right, so underneath here, uh, pretty standard uh, setup here. Oh. Can't see me anymore. That's fine. Um, pretty standard. Ooh, pretty standard setup here. Uh, it is a gatekeeper, like I said. But the biggest change now is I've done the Bauhaus uh, 32 pitch conversion on the transmission. So now we've got a smaller spur gear. There's a Kimbro plastic spur gear, uh, completely locked, and um, tied to that a giant 26 tooth, I think, pinion. It's a big ass pinion. Um, there, that's a better angle for it. Um, really big pinion and uh, lots of power. This is a Spectrum 3300 kV uh, brushless motor uh, paired to a uh, Spectrum ESC. Uh, that part hasn't changed in a while, but it's the, uh, the new uh, spur and pinion combo that's really going to make this truck move a little bit faster. I'm actually getting tires to balloon a little bit on acceleration, so that's exactly what we want. I may end up uh, pulling the drive shaft uh, from the front, make this rear wheel drive only. We'll see how it works. Um, but we're going to play with it, have a bit of fun, and um, make a nice video because I think this truck deserves that after all of this time. Uh, I am quite pleased with this. I do like how it. Do, it's impossible to do, but I do like how I made that hinge mount at the back and uh, it just kind of you know ties in quite nicely and looks good it's a good looking truck um really keen to get it out finally i think now that it's actually got the speed that it needs uh it, it'll be a fun video to make uh i'm gonna have to find some dunes some sand that'll be fun uh if you are in the gta the greater toronto area not grand theft auto if you're in the gta and you know of a good location even if it's an hour or two away put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, 
and you like having no fun, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Okay, moving on. Next on the bench, the uh, F-150 Ranger XLT from Traxxas, the low trail as I call it. Uh, there's not really a lot of exterior differences here, but there is one interior difference. I added an interior. Uh, this is from GRC. Uh, I've used this before. It's actually in a truck that's not in this room. It's in the mud truck uh, that I did. Uh, the Chevy that I still have not run. Where's all the good mud these days? Uh, full interior, uh, which is actually made for the Bronco, but fits pretty well once you add a couple spacers to move the dashboard forward. Um, and uh, yeah, now you've got, with all those clear windows, got a nice dash and uh, interior and seats and steering wheel and all the things that an interior should have and actually looks quite good in there. I chose the tan, it does come in red and black as well. Uh, I just thought, you know, tan and yellow, perfect combination. Fitment is okay. Uh, it's not perfect by any means. Uh, come hither, body. Um, you can see that uh, it's all in there. It all works just fine. I had to double side tape the, uh, the light connector into the space behind the seat. Um, but yeah, pretty pleased with that. I'm glad that it fits. Uh, it is definitely tight. There's no doubt about it. Um, but interiors are a must. This is the Scale Builders Guild after all. But all good, glad to have an interior there. Just a nice little piece to add. I'll put links down below to all the products that I used today uh, so you can pick them up for yourself. Yeah, okay, on to the next thing. This next piece is quite small, um, but it is pretty cool. Uh, here it is here. This is a piece that was 3D printed, but metal. Um, I don't know, I can't remember what kind of metal it is. Let's find out. Not steel, I believe. <laughs> it's probably aluminum or something. Uh, but this was basically printed and then that print was used as a casting to create a metal piece. And this is for an upcoming project on the UTB-18. Uh, I'm just waiting on some more parts to show up and then I'll give you the full details on that. But needless to say, it's going to be pretty fun and really twist that UTV-18 into something completely different, which I'm really excited to share. Uh, but this was made for me at a place called Fac Fox. It's kind of an odd name. Uh, they are definitely uh, overseas, uh, but you can send them a 3D file and uh, they've got a pretty quick turnaround and will do some pretty um, unique uh, materials. Uh, and the cost is fantastic. Um, I think I think it took like five days for this to be um, created and then sent to me. Uh, and it only cost like, what was it, 35 bucks? Not bad at all. I'll put a link down below. Uh, Josh from Harley Designs actually turned me on to this place. So um, yeah, you know it's okay if he's using it. <laughs> or maybe you don't. <laughs> now, very precariously balanced behind me here is the new Bamboo Labs P1S. And this is sort of what I would call the successor to the P1P. The P1P, of course, being uh, Bamboo's more affordable printer that didn't have an enclosure. This one, as you can see, does have an enclosure. So it's actually more similar to the higher end X1 Carbon, which I have over there. It's <laughs> This is not a room for multiple printers, believe me. What you're basically looking at here is um, what I would call sort of uh, the mid-range of Bamboo's printer line. You're not losing anything in terms of print performance, in terms of its quality or its speed. Uh, this Benchy right here was printed in about 18 and a half minutes. Uh, and it is, it's just amazing that that is coming out of that machine so quickly. It really has changed the game. And I absolutely love the X1 Carbon. There are a few differences between it and the P1S that I'll go through. But essentially, if you're looking to get into a Bamboo Labs printer, I don't think I could make a better recommendation than the P1S. If you are just a beginner, if you're just getting started, if you don't need a lot of um, frills, this is a great choice to make, and I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, of course, it's got the enclosure, so you can start printing in more exotic materials, uh, things that require higher heat. Uh, this one will have no trouble printing them. So you're already getting closer to the X1 Carbon than you would be if you had gone with the P1P. 
P1S also features uh, the same build plate, uh, same build volume as both machines, the P1P or the X1. So you're getting all of the uh, large prints and large capability there that you would. Same print speed, uh, same print head, same everything as the X1. The main difference is the P1S does not have LiDAR, so it can't do any of the uh, first layer detection, spaghetti detection. If there's a failure in the print, it's not going to be able to tell you. You're going to have to kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, that said, I haven't had any trouble so far. Uh, it does prints absolutely beautifully and um, has the same interface as the X1, so you can still do everything over Wi-Fi, send files to it, uh, even check on the actual prints with the built-in camera, and there is a light in there as well. Uh, the camera isn't the same quality, though. It certainly is a downgrade from the X1, so it's not like real-time playback. It's a little bit choppy, and picture quality isn't as good, so you can't make, like, you know, judgment calls on whether a print's doing really well, as well as you can on the X1. Uh, also, uh, the screen is not a touch screen. There is a scroll wheel and buttons, and it is also just one color. So you're losing a bit uh, there. The X1, of course, has a nice big touch screen color, uh, a lot more interface capabilities there than on this machine. Uh, it does still allow you to use AMS. Uh, there is an AMS unit right here. This is the multi-spool sort of holder, and it also allows you to do full color prints, uh, which I had never done actually on the X1. So I tried it out here on the P1S and actually let me grab, there's a little pumpkin head that I did. Uh, all of this was uh, printed at one time. Uh, all of the like uh, tentacles or, you know, like leaves or whatever you want to call these little bits. These are all part of the print. You determine in the slicer what parts you want to be what colors and you sort of just paint it on. It's a pretty uh, interesting process and uh, it worked absolutely flawlessly. The disadvantage, of course, with uh, multi multiple color prints is that you do have a lot of waste because each time it changes color, it needs to print a little bit of a uh, column to get rid of that color in the nozzle. So you are losing a bit of uh, material there. And like the X1, this printer also makes little tiny filament poops that shoot out the back. So you should make yourself uh, some sort of uh, holder to capture all of those as uh, you're going through this. It's sort of the disadvantage and there's really no way around it. Uh, you can, you're gonna, you have to expel that filament somehow and it does add to the print time, of course. This little guy took, whoops, this little guy took about uh, three hours to print, uh, but this was at a much higher quality as well. I wanted to go in and make sure it was getting all of those details and it captured them really nicely. There's a few ways actually that you can optimize your printing to, in order to take advantage of that full color option, uh, but it does require some sort of noodling. And uh, as we get into it and as I have more fun with this machine, I will definitely be experimenting more. Uh, another big difference, the P1S comes with the textured build plate uh, instead of the uh, more um, engineering plate that is included with the X1. Uh, this plate will allow you to print on pretty much any material. Uh, one big suggestion I can give everybody, use the glue stick that they include. It is very important uh, to help adhere those first few layers to the build plate. Uh, and then honestly, uh, this thing just prints beautifully. Uh, it's a great machine. If you are a first time hobbyist, I can highly recommend the P1S. I think this is a fantastic machine and the price point's pretty good. I will be sure to put a link down below uh, where uh, you can actually help me help you uh, through an affiliate link uh, to make some uh, extra cash to help support this channel. That's gonna do it. Uh, my thanks, of course, to uh, Bamboo for sending me this machine so I can do this quick review on it. I very much like it. I think it's an excellent machine and I cannot recommend them enough. I honestly, the Bamboo X1 Carbon has changed the game for me. And to know that there's a, a lower cost, but still very effective, very high quality machine as an option, I think is just fantastic for everybody. Everybody wins, except, you know, maybe other printer makers. <laughs> Okay, I think that's gonna do it uh, for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I do thank you for continuing to watch. I know that I had to take a little break there. Work has been absolutely crazy, and if I'm honest, I don't see any sign of it slowing, which is great for work, uh, not so great for the rest of my spare time, but we'll always make sure to make time for you. So thank you, I appreciate you. All right, that's gonna do it. Thanks so much for watching. See you again next week.